It's a beautiful morning and I have a bunch of beautiful plants and we are going to plant a free food forest. This is about one third acre down there past the blue tarp and stuff. About 70 feet wide and maybe 100 feet deep. This is where we're gonna plant. This is where I'm gonna interject and say that today is David's birthday. It is, it's his happy birthday. And I asked him earlier in the week what he wanted to do, if he wanted to do something special for his birthday. And he said he, that he wanted to come down here and plant a food forest. Uh, he's been working really, really hard on the house and hasn't had ha had time to plant. I mean, that's what he really, really wants to do. And I said, okay, weather permitting, that's what we'll do. So here we are. So what we're going to do here is plant this Balimbi tree. This Balimbi came from the infamous Balimbi hike, one of my very famous videos in search of Balimbi. I've been hunting for hours. I keep having visions. started this from seed and it's been transplanted. There's actually two of them next to each other in this pot, but I don't dare separate them at this point. So we will have a twin, a twin limby. So this is, this is so cool from seed. This thing would have been 12 feet tall by now. Cause it's been about what, two or three, three years since I found this and planted the seeds, but Hey, free Balimbi tree. Can't beat that. Okay. The Balindi chase. The Balindi chase is over. Boom! Yeah. I need right a into the ground. Help you. And now we need to put some dirt on it. I just need to put some dirt on it. You're right. So just put dirt around the edges. We'll mound it up a little higher on this side because it kind of sunk in at a little bit of an angle. But it's pretty big to move, so we don't want to break the roots off. There we go. That's it. And it comes with a free Talonum fruticosum. This is a beetle palm that we germinated. Beetle palm is the one you chew and uh, it's got a mild stimulant in it and it makes you spit red juice. My One of my sons is planting these guys all over the yard for me. This took about uh, two months to germinate. Got the, uh, the mature fruits from underneath the tree, just laid them in the soil most of the way buried, covered them with dirt, waited a couple months, two or three months, they started coming up. That's how easy it is, and it's free. Mammy Sapote. A friend of mine gave me this one. So I'm continuing the living hedge system along the fence here. The other part of it is down there. The last noni I planted is there. I'm sticking another noni right here. It's kind of a, a low, swampy area, and the noni can handle that. And it's kind of out of the way of Rachel's nose. So back here in the corner is a good spot for it. Now if you notice, the ground down here, look at how high up that pot is. There is a solid chunk of rock underneath here and water rush kind of washes down here slowly um, when it's raining. So I just set it on top of the rock. Trees are not as picky as you think they are. Like a lot of trees, you can bury them too deep, you can bury them too high. I know, you want to go for ideal. But if you've got a rock and you hit a rock in the bottom of a hole and you got a real scrappy tree like a mulberry or a noni, something like that, sit it on top of the rock and mount some dirt over it. It'll still do fine. I mean, seriously, if you start your own trees, you're not investing like 40 or 50 bucks into a tree. You're like, let's see, I want a tree there. I mean, haven't you seen trees growing out of the side of cliffs? Yep, they do it. Like hanging out over the highway on a cliff 40 feet up out of a crack. Don't worry, they're tough. I'm just gonna mount a little dirt up around it, call it done.
prepare your planet. Grow. I have another free tree here. This is a neem tree. I gotta be careful because it's full of fire ants. This is not an ideal planting situation. This is a neem tree. Here's another neem tree, which I started from seed. Free. Saw a neem growing in a parking lot. Planted seeds a few years ago. Hooray. Now it's going into my, my hedge. It's not really that much of an edible tree. You could technically eat the fruits, but I don't like the way they taste. But it is a useful, medicinal, antibacterial, anti-pest type of a tree. So it's a good one to have around. And I figure planting it in amongst all these edibles, maybe it'll help a little. We've got a problem here. Uh, this is the next spot that I would want to plant on my edible head and we have a big rock. We have a immovable rock. Which is kind of pretty, but uh, kind of in the way. So what I probably have to do is plant something on this side, plant something on this side and just be kind of a little a little gap spot in the hedge. Bend something over and stick it in between, I don't know. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can just kind of go around the back of here probably. See how close we can get to it. We'll stick this edible leaf hibiscus, albomaceous manahot, which is actually really thirsty right now. As you can see, and I'm just gonna lean it sideways. No, I don't think I will. I'll just stick it a little sideways. Like that. Poor thing. It's really thirsty up here. We don't really have our irrigation worked out yet. It's supposed to rain this afternoon, which is ideal. It's rained a lot lately, and we can expect more of the same. I was thinking this morning, what a tropical food forest needs is coconut palms. Coconut palms are the palm layer. They can come up and around and far beyond the other stuff. I'm actually standing underneath a palm right here, which you could turn around and see. Look at this. What do you think that palm is shading? Not a lot. It's high enough up that it diffuses the light. And that'll get a lot taller than that. There are some palms up on the mountainsides here that you wouldn't believe. A lot of the ones now have been selected to be shorter, easy to harvest instead of these gigantic monsters. That's so boring. So I asked my neighbor about these little palms that have been starting underneath on his farm. And he said I could come over and help myself. And I've been waiting to do this for months. Now that the rains are here, if I damage a few roots, they're gonna live through it. They're going to grow. Look at that one, that one's just barely starting to root. See that? Palms just lay on the ground. The coconut lays on the ground, the bottom part of it that's wet starts to put roots out after a time and then the top grows. Obviously we need to stick palms everywhere. Just started. Look at that. Cool, huh? I'm gonna make some biscuits, baby. Gluten can't stop me. I'm gonna dodge my taxes, baby. The man won't rob me. I'm gonna drink some last salt, baby. To clean my body. I'm rocking out at midnight, baby. Let's review what we've planted so far. 
mango, mammy apple, soursop, mammy sapoti, dwarf mulberry, balimbi, Murray conigii, the curry tree, cashew, Gesundheit. noni, beetle palm, guitarist vulgaris, neem, chaya, cranberry hibiscus, arrowroot, West Indian locust, loqua, about 100 volunteer okras, musa velatina, black Suriname cherry, chocolate pudding fruit, acerola cherry, star apple, and way too many coconuts. Planted about, uh, I don't know, 10 coconuts or so out here. Planted pretty much most of the fruit trees. We're gonna come back with the herbaceous layers and such in the future. But you know, I didn't pay for this food forest. One tree I paid $2 American for, so I can't say it's 100% free. But actually, I haven't paid the guy yet, so it's free as of right now. I haven't seen him since. But, uh, you know, this acerola cherry over here, you know, this was started from a cutting. You saw me do it on a video. These uh, little tamarind right here, these are started from seed. I had a really good sweet tamarind. I said, man, let's plant them. And we'll just leave those two to grow next to each other. Why not? Maybe they'll dwarf themselves a little bit. So the, a lot of stuff here, I mean, that loquat that I planted right here, this loquat, a friend of mine started it from seed. I gave him a few plants. He gave me a loquat. So, you know, you don't have to have a fortune to plant a food forest. It doesn't take much. And I, for those of you who are thinking, well, what about nitrogen fixers? Well, this ground was actually covered with all kinds of brush, lots of nitrogen fixers. So we don't have a problem with nitrogen fixers. Let me show you something here. You see this? Right here? Lucana. Lucana leucocephala. Right, the lead tree. Very good nitrogen fixer. Nitrogen fixer. Here's another one right here. Here's another one right here. They're, these are all over the place. This property is loaded with nitrogen fixers. I don't need any more nitrogen fixers because they were already here on the ground and they're gonna come back. So what we're gonna do is just trim around them, let them come up. They're gonna grow way faster than these fruit trees do. And so as they come up, cut around them, you know, let them go and then um, have them for chop and drop. I will bring some Mexican sunflowers over here. I'll probably bring over some uh, Gloricidia sepium. I'll bring over extra support species, but in a couple of hours, I pretty much planted, uh, along with the help of my kids, maybe a third to a half of the plants, uh, are the big plants that I had accumulated on my porch. I still have probably a uh, hundred seedlings or so of various, you know, smaller sizes that haven't been planted yet. But, you know, get going on a food forest. Learn to propagate. My book, Free Plants for Everyone. I'm serious free plants. You know, if you learn how to propagate, some of these things take two months, three months, four months to grow. But you know, I was, I was renting for the last three years. So I've had three years of stuff sitting and being moved from place to place. So I, I have seedlings and, and trees that are a decent size, five feet, some of them, you know, they would have been a lot bigger if I could have got them in the ground earlier. But as the rainy season comes, I don't even have irrigation in the system. I'm planting with nature at the time you should be planting. So yeah, check out the book, Free Plants for Everyone, and, and don't freak out about starting a food forest. It's not that big a deal. If I planted anything that's too close to anything else, I'll cut it back, or I'll cut it down. It doesn't matter. It all came from seed. Plant it all out here, see what wants to take, see what wants to grow, see what self-seeds, see what nature wants to do. It becomes an, an amazing, exciting, dynamic system, and so long as you got a little piece of land, don't got to spend any money. Thanks for watching. Until next time, may your thumbs always.